to begin at the beginning. It is spring moonless night in the small town, starless and Bible black. Dylan Thomas performed under Milkwood here in New York City for the first time in 1953. It's a place he described as the City of Towers. And during his four trips here in the early 50s, he wrote how he struggled with the scale of the city in letters home. I have no idea what on earth I am doing here in the very loud, mad middle of the last empire on earth. Here each night I have to take things to sleep. Everybody uses the telephone all the time. It's like breathing. Fire brigades, ambulances, all with their banshee sirens, wailing and screaming, seem never to stop. His name is now synonymous with a range of venues across the city. To mark his centenary, an app has been developed showing some of those key locations. And tourists can visit his favorite haunts on an official Dylan Thomas walking tour, led by Welshman Yantel Roberts. Now we're in the Cherry Lane Theatre, which is in the heart of the village. He arrived here in the typical Dylan fashion, forgetting his notes. Um, and fortunately, a friend, Judith Molina, remembered that she had a book of his poetry and dashed off to get it. But it was in uptown Manhattan at the 92nd Street Y Theatre where Swansea's famous poet found a much bigger audience. The stage is set just like it was for the first performance of Under Milkwood on the 14th of May 1953 and it was in this very seat that Dylan sat and performed to a crowd of almost a thousand people. The slow black, slow black, crow black, fishing boat, bobbing sea. Though Under Milkwood had been on the Poetry Center's schedule of events for a number of months, it was touch and go right up until the last minute whether the piece would be finished in time for the premiere. People didn't know it was going to be funny, so they're very reverent and hushed until uh, the humor begins. And a few people laugh at first, and then uh, it becomes uproarious. A few blocks away, members of the St. David's Welsh Society of New York are practicing for their own performance of the famous play. If you look at it, there were more people performing than there were in the audience, and that's what I wanted. It didn't matter whether they had talent or not. There was a range of talent there. I wanted to bring these people together to, to actually become the village of Claragin. The majority of the writer's time was spent in Bohemian Greenwich Village, where he seemed most comfortable. At one of his favorite drinking holes, the White Horse Tavern, he is still remembered. He liked just to talk with the, the workers and the truck driver and drink. He liked to drink. He was here to drink. He wasn't here to socialize in the day. At night, he would do either. He was a talker. And that's where he got his material from the people. He liked being around his peers. And his peers were miners and seamen and fishermen. And what he had here were truck drivers and longshoremen. It was up these stairs that Dylan took his final steps, only to boast to drinking 18 whiskies at the White Horse Tavern. The Chelsea was the poet's last address before his untimely death on November the 9th, 1953. The jailing islands of hotel bedrooms, from which one must escape at once. The insane desire for power that shoots its buildings up to the stars and roars its engines. Everything is not terrible here. I have met many kind, intelligent, humorous people. A century since his birth, many visitors to New York shared Dylan Thomas's fear and fascination with the city, a place where his legacy remains. Thomas Morgan, BBC Wales Today, New York City.